like a woman, son. It's all how you hold her. Worth a lot of money And a damn sure ain't for sale The good Lord only knows all the stories What is up, Wisconsin? Tell. You're listening to Raised in Wisco on 540 AM WAUK 101 FM. The Shaw Joel Clayfish here sitting across from my favorite co-host. Oh, and my favorite. Well, only. Sorry. So number mean one. To burst your bubble. Number one. You're and number last place. one out of a large <laughs> pool. Although I have to be honest, the more Anya talks on the show, the more I like it. But uh, yeah. don't get I used to it. That. Don't get used to it. I don't know. I just I, I needed a joke. I couldn't think of one that fast. <laughs> you're, come on, you're usually fairly witty in there too. Usually, <laughs> when she's not just shaking her head at me in disbelief. <laughs> and like, sometimes no. that's the I'm wittiest so thing I can do. No. <laughs> <laughs> I went bobcat hunting. I know. You told me this. How did it go? I was uh, not updated because we were saving it for the show. We were saving it for everybody here. Listen up. Bobcat hunting. Okay. <laughs> I think bobcat hunting in northern Wisconsin. Now, here's the thing. You're going to get from a lot of people that you can bobcat hunt. Every- oh, come down. I have friends in Texas. <laughs> and I'm sorry. I say that come, down, <laughs> come down to Texas. We got bobcats all over the place. Now that was that was more of like a southern like floor, mid Florida accent. We got bobcats all over the place. And you're an accent kind of guy too. I love accents. You do. I love doing accents. But now I mean you have to be a little bit sensitive about it. you can't necessarily just do all accents anymore. You have to have, you know. I can't do one. I can do a southern accent though. Hey, hey. <laughs> y'all come on down and bobcat hunt. We got some everywhere. Everywhere. Worse. I was fixing to go bobcat hunting. Here, yeah. Hog hunt. I want to go hog hunt. Hog, 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 hog. It's it's like hog, hog, <laughs> hog hunt. I still have two words because I grew up in Florida. I have two words that I still say and everyone makes fun of me for. It is <laughs> no, no, I'm nervous. It is tire, 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 and iron. Tar iron. And iron, iron, I tar- run. I run, iron. I run heavy iron. You're getting very far off track, Danielle. Oh, shocking. Yeah, right. <laughs> so it happens a lot. <laughs> everybody, so I just want to be clear. So in in Texas and in Florida, the bobcats they have down there are very small. I mean, a big bobcat in Florida or Texas is 19, 20 pounds. So I'm up north and I'm hunting bobcats with the Wisconsin Bear Hunters Association, Senator Rob Staffschult. We're up th- and I love it because they all have nicknames. It's like, I mean, you know how everybody at a bar has like, oh, hey, meet dumpster and kickstand and <laughs> twilight, armchair, <laughs> what microphone. Is, what is yours? Are you microphone? No, I don't have a nickname. Oh. I, I mean, my nickname my whole life has been fish. Fish. Well, in college, it was fish or clayfish. Sometimes it was cleavage. That was one of my <laughs> nicknames in high school. Because clayfish sounds like that a little bit. It does. Uh, Elvis, Jolvis, Elvis in his later years, which oh. I don't find particularly flattering. <laughs> it's the uh, hair. You got the hair. Well, thanks. Hey, at least you said I still got hair. But uh, <laughs> we're we're up there and we're literally like hunting with uh, possum, digger, oh, possum, possum, digger. Something was like sand, hand, hand stand or hand sand or some what? something with sand in it. But why? And Possum, Possum was a woman who was like, she knew her stuff, man. She was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Like identified the tracks and the, and Amy. And it, it was just a great, great crew. And I'm telling you, up there, those guys won't even run a track unless they think that cat is like 30 pounds plus. Okay, for someone I mean, like me has never even looked into bobcat hunting, you should yeah. probably explain to me and all of us listening. Like how you do it? Yeah. It is so fascinating. <laughs> so you get up before dawn and you go out and you start looking for tracks. because And, and the best hunting is when it snows... And we got Alex Lauren and Chris Smart on the show, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna. I'm. She's nodding a lot. Oh, she so is I don't ready want, to go. I don't want to <laughs> deny her the chance to jump in on what we're talking about. Um, but welcome to the show, you guys. Chris Smart is a precision uh, rifle shooter, which I'm real excited to get to. Uh, Alex Lauren is just an all around hunting, fishing. Uh, hunters, education, teacher, extraordinaire, all things outdoors. But we're gonna get to that. So jump in on this bobcat conversation if you want to (laughs) so 
You you go out looking for tracks. Now, here's the craziest part. I never thought in a million years, and we had what are considered fairly optimal conditions. Optimal conditions are it snows, then it's night, and then the next morning, they're all the tracks you see were tracks that were made that night. That's because it fresh. just snowed. Mm-hmm. That's what you really want. And we go out, and you're, you're kind of buzzing along the woods in the Shawamaga National Forest, and you're looking for tracks. And I cannot believe the tracks we saw. I, if I said we saw 10 different tracks, I bet you couldn't even name five of them because you never think you're going to see these tracks on a regular basis. So we saw elk tracks, Ooh. whitetail tracks, coyote tracks. Coyote tracks. That's the same thing. Bobcat tracks. <laughs> mm-hmm. Fisher tracks. Fisher tracks. Ermine tracks. Oh, what? Mink tracks. Jeez. We saw uh, rough grouse tracks. We saw, uh, what are some other little critters that run around uh, up there? Uh, there's a type of weasel that I'm forgetting the name of as well. It's like an ermine, but I cannot... All these animals exist in the north woods of Wisconsin. And you know what? Otter, otter tracks. There we go. Mm. You can see, you can literally get tags to trap or hunt almost all these animals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's so if somebody says, oh, yeah, I can't hunt enough species in Wisconsin, they're nuts. You can hunt so many cool things. So the toughest part is discerning which of the tracks are actually bobcat tracks because bobcat and coyote now which is weird because one's dog and one's a cat yes. are very similar tracks they're really? the toughest ones to differentiate I feel like i need to google this and look this up so when you you get a track you find a track that you want to run now we find lots of little ones they'll they know they know roughly the size and the weight <gasps> they are of these bobcats based on their track which is so cool. Mm-hmm. And their stride, right? They're tracking their stride. And you let the dogs out. I know, say it. Everybody says it every time when I say you let the arr, dogs arr. out. Who oh, did... I wasn't even thinking of the dog. <laughs> Who let I the wasn't dogs... even thinking of the song. I was thinking of the Anya hounds knew. going, Anya is nodding. Arr. Jump in. I, I was going to try to type it into YouTube fast enough, and I couldn't. I was just going to start playing it. You guys move too quick on this show. So um, I, I do have to, the, the new camera, I'm I the the old camera had such a nice filter on it. It oh, took away shush. my bags and everything. And the new filter is like showing uh, every sorry, line I, I put, on my face. I put the on, I put the bag Elvis filter stuff. on it. Did you not? Oh, I'm so I sorry. Got, thank good save. You put the bag. <laughs> I just thought I'd add more. Did you put the old bag filter? Yeah, on yeah. It said it said old man filter, and that's what I put on. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Thanks. So you 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 set the dogs out, and these are hounds, hounds usually plots or curs, some type of hound, and the dogs cold track it at that point. That's what they call cold tracking it. So they're following the tracks in hopes of bumping into the animal that you're pursuing, right? And I have to tell you, anybody who thinks, oh, that's mean on the dogs, these that's what dogs, that's what they're bred for, yeah, love it. And yeah, I don't care if they're job. bred for it or if they just existed it's that way blood. forever. Yeah. It is especially in, in curs. There is nothing that makes these dogs happier than chasing tracks. Mm-hmm. They're mm-hmm. hunters. Mm-hmm. They're carnivores. People, dogs are carnivores. I hate to break this to you, but all these people who are vegetarians and Tell everybody how evil it is to eat meat. I always ask them, do you have a dog? And they say yes. And I say, what do you feed your dog? Well, dog food. Dog food is meat. Amen. <laughs> dog food is meat. Dogs are carnivores. They only mm-hmm. eat meat. So if you're a vegetarian and you don't believe in feeding anything meat, well, kind of contradicts having a dog. So <laughs> these dogs will go and they're... <laughs> chasing the track, the cold track. And when they bump into the animal, that's called jumping the animal. So the animal's jumped. That's when the animal actually realizes the dog is chasing them. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, and crap. It's on. And it's on. That's called, oh, yeah, they're jumped. Because then the, the hounds go nuts. I mean, they're like, woo, woo, woo. <laughs> And then... Then the trick is, now it's bramble and briar and any other B word that means tangling all <laughs> over the place up there. And it's uphills and downhills in, in a foot and a half of snow. It is not for the weary or fat that sounds and old <laughs> like me. So I'm like, I'm and, and we had two tags up there. One of the kids was 18 and I'm just 38. <laughs> just. And... I'm thinking to myself, this kid's going to beat me to anything that's treed or bayed, you know, because he's 
thin and fit and young. <laughs> and I'm thinking, am I just completely SOL here? Mm -hmm. But what happens is they chase these things and you never know where they're going to pop out. So you kind of try to put yourself in a position that you don't have to walk like much more than a mile in to get to where the bay is, but they can be bait and then get away again. And, mm -hmm. and all the rest. And that's how you hunt them. Now, we had we ran three tracks. All these tracks were about the size of, of a Kodiak chewing tobacco tin. Now that means that those cats were thirty five pounds or bigger oh, each. So when you shoot cats, you know, in the south when you hunt hunt bobcats, they're much, much smaller. But these things that we chased were huge. Unfortunately, we never jumped any and we Aww. never we never got any. And and on the way home Five of the eight of us who were in the bobcat hunting crew ended up with the stomach flu. No. Oh, yes. That sounds so much you fun. You caught something. You didn't go home empty-handed. <laughs> wow. Thanks, Alex. <laughs> who invited her to the show? <laughs> you know what? That's okay. That's like a dad joke, so I'll take it. It was actually. It's pretty good. <laughs> uh, Alex, have you ever bobcat hunted? I've never bobcat hunted, No. Well, I, I'm in this conundrum because my tag, only, you only get a tag like once every 10 years. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's like getting a bear tag in, in the, the best zones. And you chase them. Now, they're real tough to, to, to hunt up near the Clam Lake area. But if you do get on a decent bobcat, there's much more of a chance of it being a bigger bobcat. So, that, so that's cool. But I'm kind of torn because you only get one tag every 10 years or so. Oof. But you get the whole month, you get a whole month to do it. So either December early season or January late season. So you still have time. I have time to go back. I'm just a little nervous about it because number one, I don't want to chase bobcats for four days again and not get one. Number two, I don't want to end up with a stomach flu again. Okay. So three years from now, are you going to be like, oh man, that was totally worth well, yes, the stomach flu. I'm going to, because, <laughs> and I know I'm going to go back and hunt some more. I just, it did it didn't shake out, but it is probably, I'm not joking, one of the toughest hunts you can go on is chasing bobcats with dogs. See, the only thing I can relate that to is wading through the marsh and some thick, thick muck. Oh my gosh, And I yes. am ter like I am terrified of getting water in my waders and falling in and getting sucked and going all the way down to the pits of the earth. I hate to break it to you, you'll die of hypothermia long before you will get sucked into the pits of the earth. You're listening to Raised in Wisco, Chris Smart. Precision Rifle Shooter Alex Lauren and Danielle Fairman are coming right back. With a half-shot box of shells and a kit to keep it clean. I keep a picture in the case of that sweet old man. Welcome back to Raised in Wisco. I'm your host, Joel Clayfish, sitting alongside Danielle Fairman. Hello. Can I, I have to tell you, I mean, we're coming back from the break. We're going to get uh, to Chris Smart here pretty quick, who's a precision rifle shooter, which is pew, something pew. that I have to... Yeah. <laughs> okay, Danielle, serious rifle shooters love when people are like, oh, pew, pew. Man, bang, bang, bang. Is that better? Oh, we're oh, going to talk, talk about subject. But, but I don't know what to do now. Get to... What made you feel good, Chris? Did a pew pew or bang or nothing? He's just yeah. looking at me with like, yeah. sorry, hey, hi, I'm Danielle. Hey, this is who I am. I, 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 I do looks, not understand myself either. Confused looks do not translate <laughs> on radio, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> um, before we get into this. Okay, I have so something this, too. Oh, Go ahead. Um, I did not have a headset the first time. That's why my conversation was short because i could not hear myself and and you know i have trouble with saying iron and tire yes anastasia gave me something she said i cannot read it until we're back on air yeah so it's a little <laughs> phrase and danielle's gonna read it and oh, no. you guys are gonna try to figure out if you understand it. she's gonna say it just in her way and you're gonna try to see if you understand her i don't even know if i understand myself Aaron earn and iron earn <laughs> Uh, what? Can I try? Go ahead. Just because Danielle and I have known each other for 20 years. Aaron earned an iron urn. Yes. Yes. That's She's good. not as bad as I thought. All right. No, all no, right. She, 
We Aaron we, Earn and Iron Earn. We've literally <laughs> sit in the sat in the blind together. I, I mean, linguist. I love linguistics. I really do love linguistics. And we've sat in the blind together and talked about like pronunciations of words and stuff in the past. So it is kind of a fun pastime, to be honest. Oh yeah. Um. So before we get too far away from Hell's Bells, which was the uh, ACDC song that we came back from break on, when we were in college, I went to Pepperdine University, which was a uh, fundamentalist Christian university and they had a bell tower and the bell tower worked on a cassette tape at the time. Now I know you kids don't know what those cassette <laughs> tapes were, but it was a tape, a cassette tape they'd put in and play the bongs of the bell for the hour. The bong, bong, bong. So we are fraternity and I think we're, I'm far enough. I'm outside of the statute of limitations we literally broke slash got our way into the bell tower and put the ACDC song in instead of <laughs> the bongs for the bell. So it started a bong, bong, and then played Hell's Bells over over the entire campus. That's fantastic. It was awesome. It was so awesome. It was one of the few things until today we never got caught doing. So. Until today. Oh, yeah. Now you just yeah, told usually, everybody. You told the world about it. Usually we got caught for 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 the the stunts we pulled but yeah <laughs> so there say, how, do you, how do you hide that for that long yeah i don't know that's a good question now what was the other thing you wanted to talk about um i don't know All right, well, <laughs> i think it was just this okay the Aaron well, Earn and I, Earn. I want to introduce uh chris <laughs> smart uh who's a precision rifle uh shooter he's got his team wisconsin uh shirt on sweatshirt on Chris, number one, tell me what Team Wisconsin is and tell me a little bit about precision rifle shooting. Yeah, so Team Wisconsin is uh, essentially, it's it's all of us as a group for Wisconsin. So at the end of every year, uh, our guys that run everything, we're great enough that we shoot our, our finale. Uh, but then on the Sunday following that, they put a state versus state uh, kind of friendly competition on after that. So How many people are on the team? Uh, it varies every year. So it, it's kind of a volunteer to come out and shoot for that Sunday. Uh, we'll have representatives for that from Michigan, uh, Illinois, Indiana, uh, Wisconsin, Minnesota. Is this all all over the United States? Like how many how many people yeah, so, come, how many states come afterwards? So we we're regionally here. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think we're five states in this region. But nice. this is also a national uh, sport. Ooh. So Precision you... Rifle Series is the national sponsor for it or organization for it. Uh, and then we, on top of that, we have like a regional competition that we run. Wow. That sounds awesome. I, we're going to get into some details because I'm actually fascinated by this. I am. Because, Me too. <laughs> uh, rif rifle shooting for hunters, I think, is something that is completely under practiced and underutilized in the situation mm -hmm. of an actual animal in front of you when your blood's pumping, you're breathing heavy, you kind of everything you've learned about how to shoot correctly has gone out the window. Um, do you find that that's true, Chris? Oh, yeah, absolutely. But, so the whole, the whole thing in this competition is it's built for, it's kind of designed around military, law enforcement, hunting scenarios. So you're putting yourself in odd positions uh, odd barricades to to find a, a good rest on, but you're underneath a time constraint and a shot clock. So oh, that sounds exhausting. I would be so nervous. Yeah, it, it it's giving <laughs> you those stressors. Uh, so my whole point behind it is is why I got into it is I like it for the practice, right? Mm -hmm. So getting into those hunting scenarios, your blood starts to pump, your adrenaline's going. This is kind of a way where you can simulate that within a way, uh, in order to kind of figure out how to overcome that in that situation. Well, I want to address the elephant in the room, and that is the fact that Chris and Alex <gasps> are newly fiancé. Yes, they is that are. Correct? I mean, I know that it was brand new last time. You got a rock on your finger the size of Texas. It's like a disco uh, ball in here, man. shooting <laughs> must pay well these days. That's all I You did good, Chris. And I want to congratulate you, unless that's gone south since she got the ring. Oh, uh, she still yours. got it. You, okay, I'm just... <laughs> You kind of said that like she was the lucky one. I'm not sure that that's the. I, we, I don't know that yet, Chris. So it's up in the air yet. We're, we're gonna um, we're gonna finish out the segment. When we come back, we're gonna start with the very basics of what how 
somebody in the hunting scenario can become a better shooter. But one of the things that I've noticed that has blown my mind yes. is that everybody, almost everybody, has their own personal sound for when a gun goes off. Pew, pew. Well, Bam. that's more one of the more common. <laughs> okay, that was your sound right there. <laughs> Do that again. <laughs> so I'm going to, I'm just going to, everybody has, I mean, when I hunt in different places in the world, everybody has a different sound. Danielle's is like sucking in for, do it again. Why am I keep doing this? Just do it again. Okay. I do. So my sound for when a gun is this shot is in the crowd, or in the crowd. I don't know. I do not know where that came from. Okay. Crowd I do because not know he was where talking about from. teams and everything. No, in, in the woods is. That's oh yeah, it's a rifle. Yeah. But but I don't know anyone else who does. But my nope. college roommate, he nope. does. His sound is fwabap. That's what. Bam. His, fwabap. Bap. Fwabap. I feel like you're hitting me with nunchucks. Fwabap. It's more like a bow. Yeah. That yeah. see that to me is more what? like a bow. Fwabap. Or kind of. What do I say it's for a bow? It's such a weird show. Shtum. I love it so much. And, and <laughs> one of one of my buddies in in South Africa, Eric Stridham, his is. Stoop. I like how this is an actual thing you bring up with everybody. Well, but it's so fascinating. Stoop <laughs> means something very different in Yiddish. Stoop? Yiddish? Stoop does? What does stoop mean in Shoop Yiddish? Doo -doo. I can't say it on air. Shoop. You got 40 seconds, buddy. Oh! I can't. Okay. Light bulb. Um, <laughs> ding, but yes, ding, I ding, want ding. to know more about how show. you get into this. Because I want to go out and shoot things. How do you? I, I want to know how we do this. But save that for later when we get back. You're listening to Raised in Wisco with Chris and Alex. You don't have to look far, all you gotta do is look around. This is an RA country. Welcome back to Raised we in Wisco on 540 AM WAUK and throughout the great state of Wisconsin on all Woo. your civic media stations. Do not for hey, hey, hey. We would be remiss on Raised in Wisco if we were not talking about how great it is that the Green Bay Packers are in the playoffs, Danielle. Oh, they are? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, that is even that I knew not that. How That's it hard. Works. Ouch. I'm, I'm, you know I'm sorry, but I, I, I go to games. Okay, I tailgate. I tailgate. And I then watch you don't the game. Go to the game. I don't. I don't. I don't care. I really don't care. It is not part of my pastime. Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> I'm much rather sit in the woods care. than go sit in front of the TV. <laughs> well, all right. I'm not going to have that debate with you. I'm just telling you, you can be in the woods and have the AirPod in to WAUK and your civic media stations because we are covering the Packers like no one else. Mike Clemens is on it and he knows his stuff. So even somebody who mm -hmm. doesn't know about the Packers like you <laughs> certainly can learn about the Packers even if you're out in the woods, put the earbud in. You know, sometimes I put the earbud in, and that'll be just when you don't hear the deer walking up. But mm -hmm. but also, kind of, you get in that trance, and I think animals don't notice you as much when you're kind of in that trance in the woods. So sometimes true. I will sit there with, with the AirPods in and sometimes without. But if you're following the Packers, which the entire state of Wisconsin is, make sure to check out your civic media stations and 540 AM, WAUK, and 101 FM, the Shaw. I, we're going to get back. Wait, to Chris Smart. Did you hear we have um, the Farm Report now as well on the Civic Media? That's we with do Pam have the Yonke. Farm Report. And the Farm Yonke, I like her so much. She's so great. I know nothing about oh, farming, farm, but I love listening to awesome. her. Do you know that love farmers it. play radio stations for their cows and it increases milk production? Oh. I'm not even joking about that. I believe it. And I think if they listen to this show it will really increase their milk production because we know how to milk everything oh man <laughs> but a uh, boom boom oh no. i'm very proud On johnny that note. watermelon gave us the thumbs up <laughs> anastasia gave us the thumbs down so we're coming out at a draw even. on that one we're gonna get to chris smart in a second but let's go to ray ray first who's calling us all the way from virginia virginia that's the kind of reach raised in wisco's got ray ray what's going on hello 
Hey, hey, how are you guys doing this evening? We're doing great. What's going on with you? Hey, hey, it's, it, it, hey, I was uh, stumbling around finding you guys, uh, 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 enjoying your station, finding by accident, and you're supporting the disabilities and stuff. I'm a man with no eyeballs in my head, so calling in the dark and in the time zone change. Uh, I'm very surprised. I, I, I'm... I, I'm really impressed with you guys, uh, it, and the deal with, uh, if, if we could sway away from things just for a second, the Packers, you guys, I mean, <laughs> the, communicate, the community can own a piece of the Packers. That's right. that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I, I think that, that, that is so awesome now. Uh, so, I, I don't know, it, it, could we keep it uh, simple here and not get too heavy now? I mean, or do you want to go Aaron Rodgers versus... Jimmy Kimmel or... No, or no, I don't, or, or, I don't or think whatever. we need to talk about that. We're just excited for the new love generation. There you go. There you go. And, and that's, that, that, that is such a good deal. And uh, so the perspective of football here and, and everything else. But you guys, have, uh, you, you seem to be uh, pretty straightforward on some things and, and, and that I, I enjoy uh, 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 the conversation and, it, and it's not too... Uh, uh, not too heavy-handed on one side or another. Well, well I appreciate, I appreciate that, that. Ray, Ray. And something that's very important to this show and very important to us on Race in Wisco is making sure people who have disabilities still have those opportunities to get out into the outdoors. And I know, mm -hmm. Alex, that is something that's very important to you um, and making sure everybody, and even those who've never been exposed to the great state of Wisconsin, the resources we offer, is able to get out there. Oh, yes. Okay. Let's get back to it. Chris Smart, most importantly, what is your sound for a gun going off? Oh, yes. Okay. What is yours? We're going to my sound on this? Yeah. Then I we'll, have the same one we as go you, to Ray like, Ray's like then. a rifle in the woods. <laughs> well, let's hear it, because I bet it's not exactly the same. Bang. No, no, no. We're good. <laughs> Are you Alex afraid? is over here trying to egg me on. <laughs> we'll get it. Oh, that's my sound. All right. What about Ray Ray? Ray Ray, do you have a sound? Are you still with us? <laughs> no. Is he gone? I think we I think oh. we lost Ray Ray. Thanks for calling in from Virginia, though. Chris, talk to me about precision rifle shooting in the hunting scenario. Take me through the most important things top to bottom on that. Because so many people get to that point where they've worked for years on so many things. They've got the right equipment. They've got the right attitude. They've got the right location and that animal of a lifetime is in front of them and they mess up the shot. So what, what are the quintessential basics to do your best when you're, when you're actually hunting an animal? And on top of that and beyond that, something very important is to take an ethical shot. You mm -hmm. want that animal, you want that shot to kill that animal as quickly as possible. Yeah. So a lot of it, especially with the PRS side of it, is it's the moment of the shot or right before the shot, right? So being able to control. What do you mean the PRS moment? Uh, precision rifle series. Okay. So I, I use that specifically because it's the moment right before the shot, right? Your heart's going, you're breathing, being able to learn to control that in the moment. That's hands down for me, at least that's the, the biggest point, right? Being able to have the adrenaline going, you're off rhythm. Being able to take that breath, get your your mindset, and then take an ethical shot. Especially when you're under the clock too. Like yeah. yes, we're under the clock when an animal comes in front of the in our in our shooting lane. Yes, we are, but we don't know if they're going to be there for a minute, five minutes, ten seconds. But you know, you have ninety to one hundred and twenty seconds, right? Is that yeah, it? Yeah, it, it'll vary by the match, by the stage. Ninety seconds, one hundred twenty seconds, and mm. it seems like a lot when you say it's two minutes, but you have ten rounds to get off in that. In that time, oh, you have ten rounds to get off in that time. Yeah, usually, I did not know that. Usually, ten rounds. Uh, like I said, every stage is different, so it's kind of so that's around 11, 12 seconds a shot. Twelve seconds a shot. Yeah, really. and you got to move and build your shooting positions. So a lot of these stages will be, you know, set up your your initial spot, take two shots, and then move. Take another two shots at that new position, move again. Oh, geez. Okay. So you may move five plus and times. I, I hate to say this, but. What you're describing is very often, I mean, not as many shots, hopefully, but uh, lining up and aiming and then changing position and aiming again is very often a hunting scenario. Mm -hmm. Especially with duck hunting. You so, just, they well, come duck, from all different, yeah, different directions. And duck hunting is much more instinctive hunting than, than rifle shooting, I, mm -hmm. I think. I mean, I'm in, an instinctive shooter and I'm okay. I'm only okay. I think I probably hit 
sixty percent, maybe maybe fifty, maybe sixty percent of of the birds, and I'm always trying to take headshots because they're ethical. But I'm gonna let's outline a very specific hunting scenario, and I want you to take me through step by step what should be going through the hunter's mind. Let's say whitetail walks out 150 yards, 30-06 with a 3 by 9 scope, and you are you were still hunting, so you were slowly walking through the woods. It walks out. You've got a tree next to you. Uh, what what do you do? What is the kind of the most optimal situation to drill or practice in your head? And take me step by step by step to pulling the trigger on that whitetail. Yeah, so if you've got a tree next to you, that obviously that's a great brace to use. Uh, so I'd be looking at seeing how I can get to that tree. How can I get to it? How can I stabilize the rifle where I'm not having to fully carry the weight? Obviously, your breathing is going to be heavy, especially mm-hmm. if you're walking around. Is it is it that much more important to have a brace than it is to freehand shoot something? I mean, do we see huge percentages of differences in those two things? It's going to depend on the distance. You know, what are you capable with with that with that firearm? So 150 yards, I. 90% of the time get to the tree because you're going to have that much better of a shot. In my scenario, the average I would, hunter, not yeah. you, yeah. not <laughs> you, a precision shooter for a thousand miles. Okay. Then what's the next step? You get to that tree. How are you putting your hand on that tree to brace that gun? What, what are you trying to do when you get, let's say you're a right-handed shooter and the trees on your left side? Yeah. So I'm going to use that but I would use, I'm lefty, so I'm a little backwards on that. <laughs> That's right. Just uh, fine. You're but I'm going to take my right shooter. hand. I'm going to be trying to get my fingers on that tree while grabbing the forearm of the rifle. Okay. So I want to be able to basically hold that entire rifle with my support hand against the tree so it can't move. Okay. So that way your rifle is as steady as you can make it with that. And then just keep it in your shoulder and just slowly take a breath and squeeze the shot off. So I have not had the pleasure of shooting rifles really maybe once or twice i've actually fired one so let's say it's 150 out how this it's a dead calm day am i aiming straight at where i would normally shoot if it was close by with a with a bow highly going to depend on the caliber and what you're using oh hot dog (laughs) well i don't know if i'm gonna be able in that scenario i'm not worried I would I would shoot that like it's a hundred yard shot, just the same. Hundred fifty yard shot with just about any high powered rifle that you're going to have for whitetail. And correct me if I'm wrong, Chris. Anything from a two forty three, which is about the smallest round, you'll probably end up in the woods with whitetail, uh, to a thirty out six to three hundred Weatherby or Win Mag, or two fifty seven Magnum. Those are all going to shoot. None of those bullets are really going to have much drop at hundred fifty yards. See, and, when I go deer hunting, I put a scope on my Mossberg 500 and I don't shoot very far. That's, that's my, so you're, that's my gun you're hunting. rifle hunting with a shotgun. Yes. In other words. So yeah. I, I don't have the experience of doing any of this. Well, okay. I've watched, you know, movies. Yeah. And, that, <laughs> and so that is part of that with the PRS, right? So you're going to be able to test your skills, but you're also testing your equipment. So you're going to be able to see what is your rifle capable at 300, four, five, six, now, some of these matches will be a, a thousand yards. Uh, I've seen a couple. A thousand yards? Yep. And a, and a couple of these will run, if, if they're available, to a mile. Ooh. That's insane. I'm so down to try so this. So then you're talking about bullet drop, compensation, windage. Um, direction that you're shooting how, in. All I, that's going to start to play. Direction you're this? shooting in? Yeah. What? How? Because of the rotation of the earth? Yep. yep. Seriously? It yeah. makes that big of a difference? Yeah. Well, over how? a mile. Yeah. If if your if your bullets traveling at let's say 3000 feet per second, it's taking more than a second to get that mile. Oh, that's so it's taking cool. I have to watch than a this. second to get that mile, to get to that mile and the bullet is going to you know, gravity's taking hold, but then that's against the rifling of the barrel, which is another physics effect that You're going to start to get into the rotation from the barrel. You're going to get into the rotation of the earth. Even those you're talking more extremes in those scenarios, so I, would, if I would highly flat, not go to that. If you're, hunting, a flatter, but... if you're a flat earther, you would not take into compensation <laughs> the rotation of the earth. You would but... not. They say, nope, it ain't true. That's it. <laughs> We've just settled it. Anya, we settled it. I don't, the earth I don't is think round. we could say that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we're allowed to say that on air. I'm sorry. <laughs> we settled it. The earth is round because Chris Oh, that Smart... we, that. Okay, yeah. we can say that way. Okay. I thought what you meant you... the other one. Oh, no, we oh. can't say that. <laughs> we can say that. <laughs> 
We can say that the earth is round because Chris Smart says he has to take into consideration the compensation of no, yeah, no, rotation no, that's of the earth though. The rotation of the earth. <laughs> I'm a I'm a little bit jealous of the name Chris Smart. Yeah. And now she'll be Miss Smarty Pants. <laughs> that now you'll be you'll be Are you going to take his name? Yes. Mrs. Smart. That's oh nice. Oh my gosh, Alex Smart, Alexandra <laughs> Smart. So she's so smart. That's um okay, what name. is the longest but shot you've Lauren's taken? Alexandra Lauren's a pretty good name too, so. My furthest say. shot's uh 1384. Dang. Oh, wow. That's a long shot. Now so, okay, back to the hunting scenario. <laughs> Just because I'm trying to get better here, Danielle. <laughs> You're amazing. Honestly, no, the I'm... great thing to do is is bring a hunting rifle, you know, bring what you've got, come out to a match. Where are these matches held? Are they different every so, single time? Or is it, do you guys have a place have you go to? The winter? So we'll be running, uh, I think we're starting up in March this year, and we'll be running okay. up until September. Well, that's a long it's, time to get out one to a match. Saturday Why don't you plug among... how people can get... Yeah, I, let people know I, how I, to find this. Can I come out and play? Yeah, so uh, <laughs> we've got a Facebook group. Oh, Danielle will show up, and she'll have like six shotguns in the back. <laughs> like I got all of these things. What can we do? <laughs> Rifles would be a good adoption. I don't yeah. have. I don't have one. Can I shoot yours? Well, not yet. That... You don't have one yet. Yes. You're gonna get a rifle yeah. one day. Oh, I am not, a journeyman now, it's so not I can't afford this. that far this. into the future. Okay, you can I get have a, to get, get my new halfway, shotgun. You first. can get a halfway decent rifle for like. 250 bucks. I'm done with my Brownie Max S. I'm done. We're over. Well, that's an, again, that's a shotgun. I know. So how, we're do, talking people, about how guns. do people do, how do people do this if they want to, Chris? Yeah, there's a couple different ways. So, uh, we have a Facebook group or I shouldn't say we, they have a Facebook group. Uh, so it's Wisconsin precision rifle series. Wisconsin precision <laughs> rifle series on Facebook. Check it out. We're yep. going to come back in just a minute. And we're going to keep talking to Chris Smart about precision, precision, easy for me to say. <laughs> PRS. Precision C. rifle shooting. <laughs> and Alex Lauren, his newly fiancéed fiancé. You're listening fiancé to fiancé. Raised in Wisco. Welcome back to Raised in Wisco. I like it. We're kind of kicking it old school with the ACDC. I'm liking it a lot. I, ACDC was, that was like my era, co- a college and a little post-college probably. And I think, what was the guy's name? Agnes Young or something? Does that sound right? John? Angus. Angus. Angus <laughs> Young. Angus Young, right? Angus, not Ang- Agnes. <laughs> That's yeah. like a girl's name. Agnes, Agnes. like black Angus beef, mm. not Agnes. It's not Black Agnes beef. That would be weird. <laughs> Chris Smart was giving us some highlights and details about becoming a better shooter, becoming a better aimer uh, when you're out there uh, hunting. But it always has other applications as well. And it was telling us some about the uh, about the competition. And would you advise some people get into this who have never heard of it because this sounds like something really fun people can do outside yeah. of the hunting season. Yeah, we have a lot of newcomers every year that come out just to see it, try it, uh, get a feel for it. At least they can try things at further distances than they've done it in the past. Uh, some of that with with the PRS side of it, like we were showing you, uh, we get a lot of newcomers on the Facebook group that will ask questions Everyone is super helpful, willing to share information, equipment, let you borrow it, try it. Uh, oh, yeah. So we always recommend when people ask, we're like, just, you know, if you've got a rifle, come on out, try it, right? Mm-hmm. You're going to be squatted, you know, with roughly 10 people. So nine other people will be with you that usually will make sure that you have experienced people with you. So this is not like any gun range. Like if you go to um, McMillers or anything, this is, you're shooting at little metal targets going bing, 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 bing. Right. <laughs> yeah. So we, we use uh, O'Connell or sorry, O'Connell. Uh, we use Columbus Sportsman's Association this year. Uh, so that's where most of our matches will be held. OK. Where is where is where is that? Uh, north on Highway 26. Oh, OK. Nice. Just north of the uh, city of Columbus. Oh, shocking. So, which, so south of weird. Be- yeah. South which, of Beaver Dam. Yeah. Which okay. is just kind of over by Beaver Dam and about 
35 minutes north of Madison. So it's kind of uh, accessible by Madison, the Milwaukee market, and, and you know, half of the civic media stations from across <laughs> the, the great state of Wisconsin. Alex, you're nodding a lot over there. I, I need to ask you some questions, though. Hey, you have not got on to us. Alex, have you, has, has your fiancé taught you <laughs> or helped you become a better rifle shooter? Yes, he has. Um, Why do you say that like you're, def- you're like a def- <laughs> with a defeatist attitude? Like, oh well, I See, guess. He, you definitely have. Like, you've taught me a lot. I mean, definitely, it's you watch these people, these people, these guys, these ladies calculate their dope, calculate their windage. What's dope? I could tell you. Yo, bro, that's <laughs> dope. data on previous engagement. Okay, so All right. Anastasia said she could tell us too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's lobbed one back. She lobbed. You didn't one even right. hear it. <laughs> she lobbed one right back at you. Yeah, so a lot of us have ballistic calculators on our phones, or uh, we have well, wind who meters. Doesn't? Uh, so we're <laughs> using that based on the knowledge of what's the muzzle velocity of the ammo we're using, what's the grain weight of that bullet, what's the twist rate of the rifle. Um, all of that information gets put in a calculator, and there's a lot of math that goes on in the background. But Ooh, there's gross. an app on your phone you can plug in the data and say, I'm shooting at a certain distance this direction, this is my wind, and it'll give you a recommendation that you can use. And when you use that recommendation, are you tuning your scope then to that yeah. recommendation? So it'll it'll say seven clicks right, two clicks down. Is that how it works? Yeah. Oh. So my scope is, is exposed turrets. So that's what I use. So I sure. can make quick adjustments it's got markings on it so i don't lose track of where zero truly is huh and exposed turrets give me give me fits because you i will sight my gun in at 200 yards and and then in the case or while i'm walking or while i'm sitting there i've bumped it and moved it a few clicks and then all of a sudden i'm shooting you know five inches off that drives me nuts yeah so if you look at a lot of these higher end scopes you don't have to get into a higher end I didn't say I was scope. shooting with higher end scopes, Chris. <laughs> you don't have to, but a lot of a lot of the manufacturers now are bringing out what they call like a zero stop. So there's a collar underneath that that you set in reference to a zero. So if you ever go out hiking, hunting, and you bump your zero, you know to just crank down back to your zero location. And then oh, it's nice. a hard stop on and that. And it's a hard so stop you know at that it's point. where you sighted your gun in yep. with no end at 150 yards or 100 yards or something like that. Nice. So, Alex, do you do this? You've got a Team Wisconsin shirt on, too. Are you out there doing this precision rifle shooting? So the way I'm out there and the capacity is I'm either an RO or I'm a squad mom. Okay. What's R- an RO? What's an RO? Range officer. Okay. Um, there's cool. something that PRS puts on called the Barrel Maker. Um, that was what they used to put on. It's basically the big finale for the Wisconsin series, and they need volunteers to help run the squads. And me and Chris were ROs one time. It's a pro series. Pro series. Oh, the pro series shoot. And um, I had people saying, I could hear you from across the field, Alex. Because <laughs> when I do it, I'm real serious. I'm like, Don't. I'm very loud. Evidently. I'm very loud. I am very loud. Um, I got that from Teacher Hunter Safety, being the range officer. Um, but it's something I want to get into, but you know, it is with him. Everything is such an investment because he's such a gun freak and it's basically his job. Yeah. Guns so, are so cool though. You know, my <laughs> thing this year has really been, I just really support Chris in this sport and I'm there for him. But my thing right now is like doing the hunter safety and doing the events and stuff like that. But I would love to. And we talked about that with you last week. Would you plug your upcoming event for us real quick yes. so folks know what it is and where they can go to, and reach out yes. to be a part of it? Um, so I am a First Hunt Foundation Share the Heritage State Representative for First Hunt um, Mentor. And what we're doing on February 10th and the 11th at Mil- at Milford Hills, my accent came out, Milford Hills, <laughs> Milford Hills we are hosting a free um, mentored pheasant hunt and a hunter's education class. So in order to be a participant for that, 18 and older, do not carry a current hunter safety education cert and be a Wisconsin resident. And this is for women, correct? For women only. Yes. Yep. This, this is event fantastic. is for women only. But just some <clears throat> updates. I went to Milford Hills today, talked with, to them, saw the Did classroom. you meet with Taylor Williams? I did. He's awesome. <laughs> he I is. love that guy. He's, He's the most accommodating awesome. person I've ever met. Very professional. Very, very nice. Good job, um, Taylor Williams. I'm telling Lloyd that for you. Uh, I met with Tim Slavens. Sorry, Tim, if I said your last name wrong. He's the other. He's the head instructor there for Hunter Safety. We're going to be working together, teaching nice. the girls. And... um. 
How many more uh, spots do you have? Eight spots. How many so more do you have we have eight spots so far. I have 22 submissions. So oh, it's dang. open till January 17th, Good ladies. So make sure you get your submissions in. And we'll be picking them on January 17th. Well, that is awesome. And that is a perfect way to wrap up the show. Are you going to... Oh, no, you have your Hunter cert, obviously. Do you know anyone who's going to apply for that? Um, I had a couple of friends that already did, but we'll see if they choose them. Gosh, we learned a lot about precision rifle shooting, about what Alex has got going to get women into hunting. What an awesome show it was. Yes. Hey, yo, to our five listeners, the Kennedy clan in Oconomowoc. Mm -hmm. We'll be back next week on Raised in Wisco. Bye. Shake it up the knee!